here we are back at the ranch and um, I actually changed my mind about putting it in the 64 for now um, what I decided to do instead is I've got this um, AMD machine um, from the other studio now this previously has been running the Emu 1820M and before that it was running uh, the ST Audio C port um, so it's had a few cards, I think there was something else installed in it at one time as well but basically it's had a few cards installed already so um, it'll be interesting you know to see we'll put the uh, we'll put the ESI ESP 1010 into this and um, you know if everything goes with this alright it's an older machine but more importantly it's already had several sound cards installed and several drivers installed previously and um, it's got some music software on it as well so um, let's put it into here this is the ESI card in the ivory white and I'm going to bung that into slot number PCI slot number three like that I've got a little screw here to screw it in with there we go like that nice and firm so to that multi-pin connector there, we're going to add this big multi-connector cable. Okay. Uh, by the way, you know um, it's important with these rack-type devices that have a multi-connector. Don't unplug them while the machine's switched on. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to plug that into the card and lock it down with these locking screws you know the old usual locking screws there let's move that back a bit there ok that's plugged in nice and firm, there she is, she's in now back on the um, sound card over here I'll connect this uh, multi and out connector which has the SP diff connection and there, like that, that fits okay. Uh, screen and everything's already wired up. Now, I'm just going to turn off the camera while I check the manual because the ESI Julia didn't like to be automatically uh, found by the PC on boot. It liked you to um, install the software manually. So, I'm, without wasting the video, I'm just going to turn the camera off for a sec and read the manual and make sure um, which procedure this particular card likes for installing. Okay, see you in a minute. I've had a look through, uh, doesn't seem to be any problem, so let's boot her up. Here we are, the usual welcome to the found a new hardware wizard, and it's found a multimedia controller there. So ESI says to install from a list or specific location. That's what they say is best. So we'll do that. I will tick install from a list or specific location. I'll click next. And uh, now it comes up with the usual, um, you know, where do you want it to look? And uh, we're going to put in the CD-ROM, the install CD-ROM. Of course, we will get the latest drivers. Um, I've brought a network cable in which I'll plug in later because I want to add the uh, to update the drivers and also to put on the right mark audio analyzer but I'll just chuck in the CD, the installation CD. Browse. So there's the DVD. We're in the ESI folder. We want to choose driver. Open that up and there's all the drivers for their products quite a few, uh, these are common um, install disc and uh, there's the ESP 1010 and we click on the folder there version 1.1 and you can see down here this OK button is now available to click so I shall click on the OK OK and now hit the next and it will search the CD in that folder that we've just scrolled to 
The software you are installing for this hardware hasn't passed the Windows logo test. It says that for every sound card on the market. Don't worry about that. Continue anyway. And it's setting a system restore point. And it's completed the found new hardware wizard. And you can see there that it's installed the 1010 controller. Okay, so now we say finish. And down the bottom here, found new hardware. Woo! And now it's going to ask to install the software. That's the control software applet and stuff. So, uh, again, install from a list or specific location. I'm ticking that one. Okay, it's a bit out of focus, but next, next, same location, and again the warning that it hasn't passed the Windows logo, continue anyway. You know, it's installing the wave drivers. <coughs> and the wizard has finished installing the software for the 1010 Wave 1. Well, there's the fan new hardware wizard saying that it's uh, ready to use. We'll look at that in a sec. But there was one thing I found in the manual, which is the phantom power sockets on the unit itself here. They'll do 12 volts phantom power with the power coming from the PC along the multi cable. However, if you want to do 48 volt phantom power or anything above 12, you've got to plug in the power adapter. To that little socket there. I don't know if that's visible actually, I'm having trouble seeing that. I mean, in the screen of the camera at the same time to make sure you. Oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. That little power connector. And it has to be a, nine, uh, a, a, a DC 9 volt 300 milliamps. Is that correct? Yeah. And it says um, don't use anything but that. So, uh, a bit disappointing, I suppose. That could be said to be a niggle. Because um, you, you know, you probably want to be able to use a, a phantom power mic at 48 volts. So you've got to go out and get a little adapter. It, I, I don't know, you know. Perhaps the SI could have included one. I mean, for the price of a couple of bucks that it would cost them to buy them in bulk, um, you know, perhaps they could have gone out and got them included in the package. But then again, they would have had to have different connectors and voltages for different territories. But uh, so there you go. Want to reboot, restart. I'll just put it in pause while it restarts. <coughs> okay, rebooted after the install, and um, I just want to quickly show you this. I downloaded the Rightmark audio analyzer test, and I've done the loopback test, where you plug the um, you can see down here you can plug the output one and two into input one and two and test them. And I'm on the Rightmark site looking at the results for the RME Digi 968 PST. Um, if you look here, the uh, frequency response of the RME is uh, plus 0.05 minus 04, excellent. And um, well, I mean, up here we're getting pretty similar for that, plus 7, whoops. I'm getting focus plus 7 minus 04. Um, well the noise level is minus 95 on the SI, it's minus 94 uh, for the um, DBA on the RME, so they're comparable, they're almost the same. Dynamic range on the on the um, RME is 93.6 and it's 95.8 on the uh, ESI 1010. Um, total harmonic distortion on the ESI is 0 0.0008 on the uh, RME it's 0 0.0017 um, so that's less on the ESI uh, what else have we got there IMD plus noise is 0 0.0049 on the SI. Oh, it's sick, it's 0 0.0060 on the um, RME and stereo crosstalk minus 96 on the RME and uh, minus 97.9 on the on the ESI ESP 1010. Now, looking down here, the analyzer site uh, analyzes all those settings for the RME as being excellent, very good, very good, excellent, 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 excellent. So basically, you've got 
almost identical or almost certainly within you know the same kind of range results for the SI so that's as I suspected really good I mean I love the Julia it's quiet as a mouse and sounds beautiful flat as a pancake lovely so um, yeah so I just thought I'd get into that I won't save that <laughs>